Hello again. In this video, I'm going to talk about means. Suppose we have two positive numbers, A and B. One way to summarize this data is by using their mean. But there isn't just one definition. There are four famous means each useful in different contexts. The arithmetic mean is the most common thanks to its linearity and often appears in fields like demography and statistics. The geometric mean is especially useful for growth rates and percentages, for example in finance and economics. The quadratic mean, also called the root mean square, shows up in areas like AI when measuring prediction errors. Finally, the harmonic mean is applied in physics and engineering, for instance when dealing with averages in electricity or speed. As the values of A and B change, each mean changes as well, but there is a clear pattern. First, all four means always stay between A and B. More interestingly, they preserve a strict order. The quadratic mean is always greater than the arithmetic mean, which is greater than the geometric mean, which is in turn greater than the harmonic mean. This inequality holds for any positive values A and B. The main idea of this video is to show this pattern visually. Since working with positive numbers and their square is essentially equivalent, we will focus on the squared version of the inequality. Even the bounds between A and B becomes clear if we assume A is larger than B, which is a hypothesis we're gonna hold for the rest of the video. Now, let's talk about some basic rules of areas. First, the area of any shape is always non-negative. Second, if two shapes don't overlap, the area of their union is just the sum of their areas. Third, if one shape is contained inside another, its area can never be larger. This is called monotonicity. Fourth, for rectangles, the rule is simple base times height is equal to the area of the rectangle. And finally, area does not change if we move, rotate, or even reflect the shape. These rules form the foundation of everything that follows, and we will rely on them in the proof section coming next. For the proof, I place the values a on the x-axis and b on the y-axis and draw the line y is equal to x. I will highlight the region where x is greater than y. Our moving point ab will live in this region for the rest of the video and it can touch the line when a is equal to b. By symmetry, it suffices to work in this region. We may assume a is a greater than b without loss of generality. And every statement we prove here automatically holds when b is greater than a as well. The rectangle formed by a and b has area area 1 equal to a b, according to rule number 4. Now I add a red region to the rectangle defined by a and b and value their values. According to rule number 3, area 2 is always at least as large as AB, no matter how A and B change here. So what is the exact value of area 2? By adding the dimensions to this shape, you can notice that the red region can be sliced in another way, along the y equal x. 
This produces two right triangles, each one exactly half of a square. The first is half of A square, the second is half of B square. Since these two regions are disjoint, their union has an area equal to the sum of the two, which gives area 2 equal to 1 half A squared plus B squared. This shows that AB is less or equal than 1 half A squared plus B squared, which is one part of the chain of inequalities. Moreover, since the red region fits entirely inside the white square of side length A, its area cannot exceed A square. So 1 half A square plus B square is less or equal than A squared. Next, let's add these dashed lines at the midpoint of A and B, both vertically and horizontally. Then by extending these lines together with the rectangle defined by A and B, we obtain a new maroon region. We shade it and call it area 3. It is built in a such a way that it always lies between area 1 and area 2. By using symmetry and translation, we can then transform it into a square of side length a plus b divided by 2. Therefore, its area is area 3 equal a plus b divided by 2 all squared. This gives us ab is less or equal than a plus b divided by 2 squared, which is less or equal than 1 half a squared plus b squared advancing then the chain of inequalities. We can also add a new element inside the rectangle itself. By intersecting the line y equal x with this diagonal, we create a smaller square of side length c, fully contained within the rectangle AB. By moving along the diagonal to this intersection point half A, half B, we notice that half A is larger than C, since A is greater than B. Geometrically, to reach the point C from the point M, you must first go left, then up, so that means that A divided by 2 is greater than C, which implies that A is greater than 2C. On the other hand, half B is less than C, which means that 2C is greater than B. The first inequality shows we can fit another square of side C inside the rectangle. If we slice it along the diagonal and rotate one part, we see two such squares filling the half of the rectangle. Taking a copy and placing it in the other half defines a new area, area 4. By construction, area 4 is always smaller than AB. than AB. Moreover, area 4 is exactly a square of side 2C. That means 2C squared is less or equal than A times B. But what is the value of C? Returning to the original position and extending the construction, we see that these two lines are always parallel, since they make the same angle with the horizontal. By rotating the left region, 
then slicing the top right region, then translating it along the diagonal. The area AB does not change by rules 5 and 6. This rearrangement produces a new rectangle of area A plus B times C. So A plus B times C is equal to AB. Solving for C gives C equal AB divided by A plus B. Therefore, area 4 is equal to 2AB divided by A plus B all squared which is less than AB as we've seen before. The last step is to use the inequality 2C greater than B. Squaring both sides gives 2C squared is greater than B squared. With this, we have successfully completed the whole sequence. The squared means inequality. And by removing the squares, we arrive at the final goal of the video, the means inequality. Notice that C can also be understood as the solution of this system of equations. It is simply the intersection point of these two lines, and this produces the same result as found earlier. And uh, as for this particular rearrangement, it's the same idea I used for my very first video. To give a visual understanding of why ln of ab is equal to ln of a plus ln of b. You might enjoy watching it for the full explanation, so thanks for watching.